Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Philip Schuster. As you know, I'm your teacher in the Corporate Social Responsibility course. Today, in lesson two, I would like to talk about net zero. That means talking about climate change, CO2 emissions, and everything related to that when it comes to your corporate responsibility. You know, it's one of the political agendas that is mostly seen and maybe one of the most important ones that we have to deal with at the moment. And the next topic is circular economy. And also this is at the forefront, uh, for example, of the EU policies. Yeah, we think of the circular economy action plan. And with the Green Deal, this will be the future economy vision of the EU. So we have to talk about it. And even though it's not so pressing yet, you want to be prepared and already be set your mind towards a circular economy. What's that that mean? So we give you just a little insight because this is a complete different course, but we want to give you some basic understanding. And so, you know, at least which are some important factors that you already have to uh, have in mind. We give you some new vocabulary as well. So you know a little bit more about circular economy. And this is a good introduction into corporate social responsibility. Why? Because this is now understood politically also as the main responsibilities as of a business is contributing to climate uh, emergency. Yeah. And on the other hand, solving the resource and the waste and the energy problems by co converting to a circular economy. Yeah. So there's, a lot of benefits also from engaging into sustainable management practices, if you want to say so, investing into corporate social responsibility, another terminology, no, ESG, many things talking about basically the same thing in different aspects, maybe, but they are pretty common, no? So net zero, two possible definitions that we could work with, actually. Net zero is a target of completely negating the amount of greenhouse Gas is produced by human activity to be achieved by reducing emissions and implementing methods of absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. We know it's not the only greenhouse gas, but the, maybe the most uh, common one and the biggest amount. And so the one that's shaping climate change maybe the most, although there's others that are even worse, but the impact is lower due to the quantity. Yeah. Um, so you may talk about CO2. So also when you talk about, let's say, uh, a greenhouse gas inventory for your company, yeah, when you think about measuring your CO2 footprint, you mainly report CO2 emissions. If you have significant amounts of other greenhouse gases, you need to apply them. If you want to comply with certain uh, ISO standards, for example, then you're required to also report them, but you can't report them in CO2. Obviously, you would report them in their own units. Anyways, the impact needs to be evaluated under certain conditions. So we talk about CO2 mainly, but don't forget the other ones that also can occur. Yes. So on the one hand, it seems, says reducing emissions, but on the other hand, it also means um, yeah, increasing the capacity of observing um, carbon di dioxide that could be by building tree, uh, planting trees. Yeah, the, one of the main things maybe people talk about, but there's also a movement saying stop planting trees yeah, because just wildly planting trees uh, without the proper maintenance and sensible planting uh, might not be as beneficial as it wanted to be. So also you want to look more carefully which CO2 reduction projects maybe you want to you know, invest in compensating measures. I'm a big fan also of Hummus projects, yeah, not the food, but creating topsoil, yeah, a rich hummus layer of topsoil really uh, has a big capacity of absorbing CO2. Interesting campaigns and projects already in place. So I can only encourage you maybe to look into that direction too. So another one that I want to show you, another definition. Yeah, We've all heard the term net zero, but what exactly does it mean? Put simply, net zero refers to the balance between the amount of greenhouse gases produced and the greenhouse gases removed from the atmosphere. We reach net zero when the amount we add is no more than the amount taken away. So at least you're not contributing to global warming. 